Hi, welcome back to The Roundtable. I'm your host, Stephen. Today I'll be talking about a little bit of my history with KISS. i um, been a long-time fan, as most of you guys will know. If you've seen a lot of my videos, I do talk a lot about this band, but I, I do love them very, very much. And now that the end of the road has finally become the end of the road for the physical band, as we saw the avatars at the end of the show, um, so we can only guess that these will be the new replacements for the future tours. But I'm going to be dealing with the guys that I know. And the thing with me, I'm kind of a reverse KISS fan in where I grew up with the non-makeup years first. And um, although I think I did see KISS Meets the Phantom in the theater, I don't remember a whole lot of it. Besides, I thought that it was cool that they had superpowers. And that's I, that's as far, I, was, I think I was nine years old. So I don't remember exactly. I, I, I don't know why I even went because my parents didn't like KISS at the time. So... I think I went with my mom and my dad, and I'm not sure why they went. I guess because everybody else went, and it was a kind of a weird experience that my parents who never listened to this stuff is seeing the movie, and as we all know, it's not the greatest movie in the world, so I don't think this converted them to KISS fans, and I think I was just kind of enjoying the moment of seeing these guys and make up larger-than-life characters with superhero powers, and I think that's where I remember the most that they had all these powers, and I thought that was really neat. Uh, but that kiss wasn't at that time my kiss. So when I grew older and started buying records on my own, um, kiss was kind of fading out. They had the elder that didn't do well. Their disco albums weren't sitting well with the fans. Because back in that time, when you were a rock band, you were a rock band. So you didn't branch out. You didn't, you didn't expand your palette. You stuck to what you knew. And these guys were a meat and potatoes rock band. Needless to say, they continued on, and they, the big thing was in 1983 when the band saw no option but to remove the makeup. And that's when I got involved and kind of said, okay, what, what's going on? What's this big announcement? And, oh, these guys under the makeup are, you know, we finally get to see who these guys are. And I uh, got excited. I liked the song Lick It Up, the single, and so this, the album Lick It Up in 1983 was actually my first KISS record. And to this day, it is still one of my favorites, partially because of nostalgia, because it was the first. But in my opinion, I still think this is a strong album. I love Exciter, great album opener, very um, seductive Paul song. Not for this, it is a decent Gene Simmons song. The title track, catchy as heck, love it. Young and Wasted is not bad. I love Give Me More, great rocker. All Hell's Breaking Loose with the rap intro, Kiss did it first. Everybody thinks Aerosmith did it with Run DMC, but Kiss did it first. A million to one. Probably the most underrated ballad in the Kiss catalog. It deserves to be listened to once. Um, a lot of people don't like Fits Like a Glove, Dance All Over Your Face. But I do like the cheesy, because Kiss is a little bit cheese. There's always cheese and Kiss, right? Uh, on the eighth day, God created rock and roll. I know it's cheesy, but I like it. It's a Gene Simmons song. and This was my initial taste of the band and I was hooked because I think with removing the makeup they got out of the 70s in a sense but they also were accessible I saw them as okay they're 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 guys there's just four guys and I can I can appreciate that I can I can wrap my head around this because I think when I was younger I said well, what am I these guys are superheroes they're in a band again I was nine years old what did I know we didn't have the internet, so, you know, we relied on magazines, and, you know, and my parents were kind of looking at, you know, Gene Simmons with the blood on the cover going, we're not, we're not buying that for a kid, there's no way in hell, you know, it's, it's, it was a different time, you know. I grew up with, like, Kenny Rogers, uh, Inkelbert Humperdinck, if anybody knows, Tom Jones, you know, uh, the Carpenters, those were my references of music in, in my home, and then, of course, my father had the Polish music with the umpapa. That's what I do. So this was totally something else. And I think them removing the makeup made them a lot more accessible to me. And I felt I could identify with these guys. I was coming into my own um, as a guy, you know, puberty, sexual needs, lick it up, kind of went hand in hand, right? It's every guy's kind of fantasy. Um, as unpolitically correct as that is to say now, in the 80s, it was, you know, free-for-all. So that was, except I don't think Lick It Up would be 
maybe released as a single today. I'm not sure. That was my first album. I thought that um, Vinnie Vincent was a great guitar player, uh, although we did hear about his troubles later on and he gets kicked out of the band. Um, Eric Carr is a drummer, phenomenal. Liked him as he sang. He sang, he sang well. I heard him on a, couple of, on a couple of shows now, going back to YouTube. Um, you know, of course, after Lick It Up, I was waiting and dying for the follow-up. And when I heard Heavens on Fire from Animal Eyes, I said, wow, these guys are fantastic. This is this is my group. They not only solidified, they came back out of the 70s and today, but their second album, This Sounds Good to Me. And I, you know, and at the time, I really enjoyed Animal Eyes. Um, maybe not as much now, but I still think Thrills in the Night is a good song. Heavens on Fire is still good. I love the album opener, I've Had Enough, Into the Fire. Get All You Can Take is, this, is Decent. And every once in a while, I do like Lonely as the Hunter from Gene Simmons. Although, you know, in the 80s, Gene was kind of um, dabbling in movies and wasn't putting Kiss as a priority. And I think most of us know by now, the 80s, Gene wasn't as consistent as the 70s, right? So, um, what else? We had Asylum, which there's days I love this album, although the cover, one of the, I, I'm going to say still, one of the ugliest covers. These guys full-fledged went into glam rock into this. They went head toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Poisons, the Rat, Motley Crue. They looked like one of them. And I think that's what kind of, they lost the 70s fan base maybe, or they didn't like it because they weren't wearing the makeup and they looked like every other band on this album they looked like almost every other band uh, for me always been the saving grace is paul stanley's voice i think he's one of the best frontmen in rock ever whether you like kiss or not paul stanley commands the stage when he goes out there i've seen them like six times and you're you're standing at attention when he starts when he starts singing when he starts talking you're there and you're paying attention to every word he says um king of the mountain i liked it Every once in a while, I do like Any Way You Slice It by Gene Simmons. Who Wants to Be Lonely, I think, is a better song than Tears Are Falling, which was the major hit off this album. I like Who Wants to Be Lonely a lot better. Of course, there's the cheesy Ah uh, All Night. It would be a Kiss album with some sort of sex song on there. Asylum, there's days I think this is fantastic, and there's days I go, meh. But that's me, right? Uh, what else did I like? Crazy Nights. I remember really loving this album because it was so different and yes it was poppy and keyboard oriented but yeah i liked it you know um hot in the shade too i thought it i thought it was better than 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 crazy nights in a sense that it seemed more rockier and they found their rock roots again what else did i buy in the 80s smashes thrashes and hits where eric carr does beth on here and peep there was an uproar for a long time on that one um and there's the new songs they were cheesy let's put the x in sex never been it was catchy then now it's cheese i do like you make me rock hard i like it um but like i said i grew up in the 80s i think that bruce kulik when he came aboard and 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 Eric Carr, that lineup was fantastic. And I saw the Hot in the Shade tour, and I thought the musicianship was just fantastic. Because even when they went back with the reunion tour, as much as I, because I never seen them, I was, and I went with uh, one of our very own Dino, Dino Tioli from the Around Table. He's, you know, works in the background here. Uh, we went a few times. I think we saw the Union Tour together. Um, I, I, for myself, I enjoyed it, but I said the musicianship. If you went to see Hot in the Shade and the Revenge Tour, the playing was just so much better from, from Kulik. And Singer was on board then at that time, too, with Revenge. And I'm not taking away anything from Ace and Peter. They started the band, but I grew up with the 80s lineup. So for me, there's always going to be a special place in my heart for that lineup. Um, you know, then Revenge in 92 was, I think, maybe the last great Kiss album, like classic, that you could sink your teeth into. Although I do like Monster and Sonic Boom, I don't think they're classics. I think they're solid albums, don't get me wrong. 
uh, but I think they kind of went back to basics to the 70s sound, which is great. But after hearing something like Revenge, excuse me, and uh, something like Creatures of the Night, you know they could do a whole lot more. But again, I still love them. I think Paul Stanley was has always been underrated as a as a singer. Um, they, they released albums every year in the 80s, practically. I mean, they're one of the few 70s bands that consistently released product. So I give them kudos for that. I love them to death. I'm going to miss them. I do hope that they may not record a full album together, but I'm kind of hoping they, you know, there's going to be a greatest hits eventually down the line of, you know, 50 years of Kiss, 50 tracks, hopefully a bonus song, a new song from the band. That would be great. But uh, I love them. I think they're, I, I, you know, but again, I'm the reverse Kiss fan. I started off in the 80s, worked my way backwards and picked up their 70s product later on. And, you know, I love the 70s product style too. I enjoyed those albums, but the 80s have always been my baby. I love them. And I think it's an underrated gem in their catalog. The 80s catalog deserves a little bit more love. And you know what? I just love Kiss. I always, I don't know. I think because they were accessible to me at that point. With, without the makeup, they were guys you could meet in a bar and have a conversation. I think that was the thing for me. And um, I just want to say thanks for the memories, Kiss. Thanks for, I went to record stores. I had a blast. <coughs> Excuse me about that. Excuse me. I went to record stores and I picked up the vinyl and I loved it. And it was a great time to be a KISS fan, I think. Even in the 80s, a lot of 70 fans might disagree. But the 80s were a whole lot of fun. And KISS was one of those fun rides that I enjoyed. Sometimes some of the songs are questionable, no doubt. Sometimes the albums may not be what you thought they're going to be. But there was consistent releases. And they tried their best. And um, I think Paul Stanley proved to be one of the best singers in, in rock. And one of the best frontmen's. In, of any band and I stand to this day that saying the 80s product is still solid and I just want to say thank you Kiss for 50 years if anybody knows them say that Stephen from Montreal from the round table salutes them thank you for 50 years of memories and thank you for all those albums that I still play to this day and um, I rock and roll night and party every day to them so this is Stephen from the round table signing off thanks again Kiss